today I'm going to talk about stress because I've had a lot of inquiries uh, this week with people talking about how they've kind of business owners, obviously, how they've kind of found the last few months and people are coming to me and it seems like they've kind of held themselves together during the kind of lockdown period and probably pivoting about five million times in, you know, for their business and stuff. Um, but now they've kind of taken a breath and realized they're exhausted, they're stressed out. Some people have made themselves sick, you know, with worry and stress. It's affected their immune systems. It's affected their mental health. Um, so I'm having a lot of inquiries this week about just people talking about, like, how do I sort this out, basically? So I thought I would get a little geeky on you today. I know a lot of you love that when I do that. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about how you can grow new brain cells. Yes, it's possible. Um, which will help you more, be more resilient towards stress. And also I'm going to talk to you about how you can create more brain manure. Fancy, eh? Um, so the area of the brain that I'm going to talk to you about today is the hippocampus. Here's a fun fact. <laughs> it's fun to me. It's not fun to anyone else. Um, here's a fun fact. Um, the hippocampus is actually two little structures in your brain which sit side by side and they look a little bit like seahorses um, which is why it's called the hippocampus because it's from the Greek words for horse and sea monster. There you go. If you ever wondered why it's called the hippocampus, that is why. Anyway, <laughs> um, in the 1980s, scientists discovered that the, the size of our hippocampus changes, right? So obviously we know that our brain cells die as we age and up until the 1980s, scientists believed that your brain just degenerated, right? And all your brain cells died and <laughs> you are uh, cheerful, isn't it? But they actually found in the 1980s that we can grow more brain cells and the size of our hippocampus changes. So the reason that that's relevant is there have been lots of correlations, maybe causation, we don't know yet, between hippocampus size and mental health and brain health. So generally people who um, have a shrunken hippocampus, a smaller hippocampus will be people who have depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, all that kind of stuff. Um, so we know that the size of your hippocampus uh, dictates how, you know, how healthy your brain is basically. Um, and the scientists found that there's a particular polypeptide called, stay with me, <laughs> I've started saying stuff like polypeptides, right? Brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Neurotrophic, nothing to do with nootropics. I just want to point that out. Neurotrophic, as in hypertrophy, is when you grow your muscles and neurotrophy is when you grow your brain. Um, but not to do with neurotropics. So don't suddenly start taking loads of neurotropics because you think you're going to grow your brain because it doesn't work like that. Anyway, this polypeptide, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, it's kind of like manure for the brain, right? So if you have lots of, you know, a high concentration of this in your brain, it helps grow more brain cells, which is cool, right? So I already talked about people who have depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, they have low levels of BDNF generally, um, which means that their hippocampus is kind of shrinking, but it's not, you know, getting replenished and not growing new brain cells. Um, so what we need to do is create more of this manure, right, so that you can get more resilient in terms of managing your stress um, and also things like your emotional intelligence, right, how you handle your emotions and actual the, the physiological health of your brain as well. <laughs> Zach, I hope you're not talking about me because we will have to have words if you are. Um, but, yes, it's like polypeptide shit for your brain 
<laughs> All right, well, don't use manure then. Let's not use manure as an analogy. I was trying to think of like your brain, like lovely roses that are growing in a garden and you put manure on them. Clearly that's not working for you because you've just decided shit for brains, which is great. Thanks. Now I can rely on you to make me look dumber than I really am. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I'm going with manure. I'm going with the manure analogy. I don't care what you say, Zach. Sorry. Um, so how can we create more manure? Not... <laughs> In my analogy, not for real, right? So we know things like um, stress. If you're stressed out, that reduces the amount of BDNF um, in your brain. So you need to manage your stress. So you can see it's like a chicken and egg thing, right? So if you, um, if you have low levels of BDNF, it can cause stress. Stress can also cause low levels of it. So it's kind of like a chicken and egg thing, right? Um, so managing your stress is super important. So that's why I work on that kind of stuff with my clients a lot, because it's not just about oh, managing your stress properly. It's actually about um, it's actually about creating physiological changes in the brain that help you do that instead of just relying on, oh, I'm trying not to be stressed. Do you know what I mean? So stress reduces it. Um Exercise increases BDNF, right? So um, doing some kind of regular exercise is really going to help in terms of being able to manage stress, right? So, yes, we know that oh, if you do exercise, it manages your stress. Certainly, like for me, I go boxing. Like that really manages my, all of my frustrations, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> um, but it really does help because not only does it manage it from a um, – an emotional point of view right it's really good to hit stuff really fucking hard like believe me it really is um but also from a physiological point of view because i'm increasing the concentration of bdnf in my brain so exercise is really good for that and also interestingly in animals so this is an animal study i don't normally quote animal studies because we do not really behave physiologically and biologically like rats even though people seem to draw conclusions that we do we don't but in animals they found that social interaction and a stimulating environment so this is where obviously they might have rats in cages and then they put little wheels in there and then they've added more rats and stuff like that in a controlled in environment in in that way controlling those variables um they found that this social interaction and stimulation uh, also increases bdnf so I guess that means be sociable, right? If you want to grow more brain cells. Um, and then other things that can help are actually related to our diet. So our diet absolutely does have an impact on our brain health. I know a lot of people think mental health is in the mind, right? And the mind and body are separate. It doesn't work like that. It's really important to understand that you're your mental health and everything that's going on your in your mind is really really impacted by your physical health so you know and all the things that you do from a body perspective what you eat the exercise you do all that kind of stuff um so in particular things that are good for bdnf are omega-3s so people should definitely be taking omega-3 supplements um so omega-3s and then there are various sorts of kind of antioxidants in things like berries, red grapes um, and other bits and pieces that I can't remember and probably should have written down for you, but I haven't. So there. Um, so that a good diet definitely impacts that. So does that necessarily mean that conversely a bad diet impacts it? Because that's a conclusion that you draw. Right. And. Funny, you should ask. You haven't asked, but I'm going to pretend that you have. Um, there was an Australian study done in 2014 on older Australian adults, uh, which showed that a Western diet, traditional Western diet, so high in carbs, high in sugar, high in processed foods, low in protein, low in fiber, 
all the shit stuff, right? Um, that can actually shrink the hippocampus and affect the levels of BDNF. So high blood glucose levels are associated with smaller hippocampus um, and lots of other stuff that I'm not going to talk about. It was a really big study, but um, it was super interesting. It was talking about sugar, also lack of fiber, because if you don't have much fiber in the gut, the um, brain hormones, serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, all of those kind of happier hormones, the production of those starts in your gut, right? So if, you're, if you haven't got a healthy gut, if you're not eating lots of fiber, that's also going to affect it. So it's all connected. Mind and body are not separate. Um, and there are lots of things that you can do to positively impact your brain manure and grow some new brain cells. Wow, that was interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> I thought I'd be a bit more sciencey today because I haven't been and I miss it because I'm a little nerd, basically, and I like talking about science shit. <laughs>